Okay. Now we're gonna do a um, servo installation on the wing. And I already cut the servo base out. The line, I'm simply connecting the centers of those two wing bolts. And from that line, I measured three inches to the servo bay edge. And three inches here as well. My end up being two and a half inches ahead from a hinge line. And as you may see on the shin here, here's the spar and then just behind this bar, maybe an eighth of an inch in this corner uh, behind this bar. First of all, I simply took a servo. By bending the hinge and uh, using square edge, I established this line so the mechanics of uh, our joint are square and I simply place the servo on top of the wing and use the exacto blade to cut around. As you may see, I left myself like eight of an inch extra space here um, around the control horn so I can do the push road installation later on. Once skin was cut off, I simply sliced the foam inside a couple of times, gently without cutting through the top skin and I uh, plucked the um, foam out. Uh, as you may see the wire channels are here for the wires so uh, I'm gonna fish the wires through and I'm gonna also uh, burn, melt the uh, push rod uh, channels here so we can epoxy the servos in and uh, have everything ready. I have Just here uh, servos of my choice which are Hyperion um, DS09 digital servos, 9 grams each. I already trimmed the plugs out of them, the connectors, so they can be soldered to the Y harness and uh, as you can see the control horn were prepared and then the hole were drilled right on the edge of the head equally on both they are in their neutral positions uh, they're and, taped uh, with uh, just a masking tape so I can uh, epoxy them securely I'm gonna put a blob of epoxy with uh, cotton fiber or micro balloons. I'm gonna use a cotton fiber because I have it at hand, and I'm gonna epoxy them down nicely, so uh, the skin has a little bit of cushion between this straight surface, and uh, it won't buckle. It won't uh, collapse here. You see, if you glue that with CA, you're gonna end up with this flat spot which you're trying to avoid off here it is and that's why uh, we're gonna use a blob of a boxy here I'm gonna melt the channels right now for the push roads for the servos because I, I have to have that ready before I can glue the servo in and the hinge line like so. that and put the square edge here so I know where on the hinge line, I want to get out from that servo well with a push rod. It's gonna be right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke a hole right here, Oops. and there we go. Here it is. So that's the position for my control horn, and that's gonna be place for the push rod to get out. I bend my hinge line up and push the uh, square against it. And I mark somewhere like five millimeters or quarter of an inch line. Three eighths from the hinge line ahead 
I make a mark and measure around quarter of an inch. That's going to be exit for the push rod. Let's do that on the other side quickly. Well, I, I will poke a hole right here. Then flip everything upside down. Here it is. Can you see it? Here it is. Let's mark that up right here. Bend the hinge line up, put the square, and mark about a quarter of an inch. And what I'm going to do now is simply cut through the skin. Using exacto blade, I do two cuts side by side and make a, a slot through which our push rod is going to go through. But basically that's all we need. Two vertical lines parallel to each other. Maybe one sixteen apart. Yeah, looks like it's ready for the rod. Now, that may look scary. <laughs> and I remember uh, I was scared at first when I was uh, about to melt that uh, push rod channel for the first time. I wasn't sure if it's gonna go straight or not. The whole trick is look like that, just the way the camera is looking. And I'm your wire at the right angle where you see that you want to get out. And you want to get out right here, right here in this spot. That's what we're going to do. Ain't that scary. Uh, I just have a simple torch. It's a bigger lighter. And that's a piece of uh, paper clip, big paper clip. And now I'm gonna melt the channel. Again. It always takes me like two, three times, four times sometimes. And I want to go slow and make sure that my angle is right. Yay! And as you may see, I'm right on the other side, right here. That's where I said that I'm gonna come out. And it it really, I I just I balled it. I I mean I just, just you know, just side down this. Just side down this wire, and then that's it. And then they dig it in a in a wing. Of course, you can make a fancy jig uh, if you want to make a hundred wings or something like that. But for one or two or even for ten, I don't think it's worth it. They're coming out pretty nice the way they are. All right. That's nice and tight. Just to smooth things out, I'm gonna run the wire once again. So later on, I will have. Yeah, that's that's really nice. And actually, I am able to see. Let me see if I can show that to the camera. See, ah, uh, you see, you can see it through the through the hole. Uh, uh, how about that? That's the slot. Let me stick the wire for you here. And uh, that's the wire sticking out of the slot. 
it's pretty far up here comparing to the many people do and they have a little slot here right on the hinge line and the wire sticking out from there uh, I'm, I guess I'm using pretty tall control horns on my flaps um, it works for me good I think that's the right angle I advise you to do it this way you're gonna uh, have really nice and tight linkage Okay, let's do the other side. Okay. First time out, this time I kept wire hot. And I did it first time. Let me show you the little tiny hole. What is it? You are a little bastard. There you go. And it looks for me like it's right on. Next thing I want to do is uh, uh, fish the wire, snake the wire to the wire channels and have everything ready and prepared for uh, epoxying servos in place. I have a piece of pretty stiff fishing line, it's an ultra thick thing, I don't know what was that it's just some kind of probably nylon wire let's see what we can get in this thing if I can come out from the inside out or would I be hmm, forced to go from here from the middle ah, there we go, no problem, look and the fact that this wire is curvy like that actually helps uh, in some way it get blocked sometime and you gotta wiggle it around to get it through but once you get to the corner like that this thing is just marvelous goes through any tight corners no questions asked always gonna find that corner and and you can follow through pretty you know elaborate um, channel okay let's tape those things together and fish the wire through. Okay, you want to make sure that you have a right servo. That's a wrong servo. Here is the horn. Horns are shaped. Everything is matched. Yeah, and then I just wrap everything in a masking tape like that. So nothing gets stuck on the way. And then pull the wire through. See, I have a little knot here, so this part of this fish line won't uh, slip out as easy as this end would. Look how easy that was. This is why it's bliss. Boom. Okay. piece of cake all right so now we have to prepare two push roads uh, place them in channels and stick them in the servos so just the glue could be applied and servo pushed in a well and basically you're ready the last thing to do it's gonna be cut the slot for the control horn and bend over bend the, the end of the push road to complete the connection. I mean, it couldn't be more straightforward than that. What I have here is a uh, piece of wire, and all I'm gonna do is gonna make a small L band here. I know pretty much that this much is gonna be okay. If you don't have that thing in your eye, how much you do you want to bend to be perfect? You will embed it more and then clip it to your liking. I think this is going to be perfect. If not, I'm going to clip off a little. Uh, either way, you don't want to bend too little. Yeah, that looks just about right to me. I don't do no keepers, no other things. The hole was drilled with the uh, drill of the same diameter, actually with piece of this wire. And uh, once everything is installed, I'm just gonna 
put the drop of uh, CA here. Well, it's a well-known procedure on all DLGs, bushings, for servos. So that's one done. Probably somewhere around here. Uh, it gets a little too long. So let's trim it off. Looks about right. Too long. Not much. But you don't want it, the color of the servo to interfere with it. So let's trim just a tiny little bit. Also, if it's too long, it would be difficult to disconnect once the servo is glued in in space, in place because there is not much space around it. So you want to have uh, long enough to be safe, but not too long to be a hassle. And that's for me, that's plenty. Never disconnected. I never had servo disconnected from those things. Okay, what I do? Take the wire back out. Drive it is finished. Push through the. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got it sticking out with the excess on this side. All right. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna connect the push rod with the servo. There you go. Wasn't that hard. See, let that slip in. Pull the wire and flip the servo out. You're ready. All you need now is a epoxy right here. Right here in this place. And flip the servo in place and that's all it is. I'll do exactly the same thing. Put the wire. Boom. Pull the wire through. Ah, boom. That's perfect. So, both sides are, are prepared for gluing and the push rods are sticking out. Once everything is ready and set in place, uh, I'll cut a slot right next to the push rods and uh, install the control horns there. The servo being glued in the servo base, the road poking out, the control horns being already installed. This is two layers of four ounce carbon fiber that I bagged and I'm using that as a stock for control horns. I cut triangles about one inch long, about half inch tall. Here you can see the four of them being ready. I mark the position where I want to drill my hole with tip of exacto blade. This is piece of push rod wire that I wrapped with some vinyl tape so uh, my uh, drill would hold it. Here's the next step you can see that all holes being drilled one corner of the triangle it's trimmed off and all is sent to shape all four being ready to install here you can see a dry fit you can see the uh, hole position is exactly at the hinge line i marked the line right next to the push road and open up with exacto blade glue the control horn in place i got pretty generous throws both ways i don't get no 90 degree flaps but I never thought there might be unnecessary.